complexification is what we're going to talk about. I've been trying to find a place to put complexification uh, between 3.6 and 3.7 or 3.8 because we're really not going to use this until 3.8 but it might be a good time to do it now just because 3.6 is pretty short. So what is complexification? Uh, complexification is all about the idea that sometimes when you're working with the sine and cosine sometimes it's easier sometimes it's easier to work with the exponential to work with the exponential function When would that be? Well, uh, so for example, how about if we're integrating something, or maybe if we're trying to guess a forcing function? You know, the method of undetermined coefficients works pretty easily with an exponential function, but with sines and cosines, it's kind of a pain. Uh, so in a, instead of trying to guess or trying to work with sines and cosines, oftentimes it's going to be easier to work with exponentials. Okay, so how is this going to work? Well, <clears throat> suppose, for example, that I want to integrate cosine of t. Now that's easy enough that you wouldn't actually change this problem, but you could embed this problem into a larger problem, and instead of integrating this, you could integrate cosine of t plus i times the integral of sine of t, and so you could get the integral of both of these simultaneously. And because the integral is linear, right, I could rewrite that as e to the i t dt. Right? And so now it's going to be easy to differentiate, or sorry, anti-differentiate the exponential. That's just 1 over i times e to the, oops, 1 over i e to the i t, right? <clears throat> so now we have to interpret what this means in terms of this problem. That's going to be 1 over i times cosine of t plus i times sine of t. Right, and so uh, just uh, cleaning things up a little bit, I'm going to multiply this by i over i here. So that's going to be minus i times cosine of t uh, plus i sine of t. And so multiplying that through, we get, uh, let's see, this is going to be minus i squared, right? So that'll be positive. So that's going to be the sine of t minus i times the cosine of t. And so what does that mean? That means we have, uh, let me pause this for a second. Okay, so that means that um, if I wanted the integral of the cosine to begin with, I would take the real part of my answer. And if I wanted the sine of my integral, I would take the imaginary part of my integral. And so what this means is, if you compare this, we have the integral of cosine of t, dt plus i times the integral of sine of t, dt is equal to sine of t, minus i cosine of t. And so by doing things in the complex plane, what you end up with is you're, you've got the integral of cosine of t equals the sine of t, and you've got the integral of sine of t equal to minus cosine of t. You get them both instead of just working with the cosine. Now I know what you're thinking, why would I do that for cosine? It's easy to do. Well, uh, why would you? <laughs> well, let's do a harder problem then. You back me into a corner. Let's see if I can prove that this works nicely. How about the infamous e to the t, an exponential times a sine or cosine? Do you remember what we had to do here? So normally you would have to 
integrate by parts by parts twice to get the same integral to appear on both sides. Right, you'd have to bring one of the integrals over to the other side and then you would have to solve. Okay, so what am I going to do instead? Instead, I'm going to embed this problem into a larger problem into the complex plane, right? And I'm going to say that instead of writing this, I'm going to have the integral of e to the t cosine of 2t uh, plus i times e to the t sine of 2t. Okay, and so by doing this, right, uh, whatever my answer is at the end, I'm going to be taking the imaginary part for the sine. The real part would be for the cosine. Okay, and so uh, let's go ahead and rewrite that. That's the integral of e to the t times e to the t i times 2t. Right, and so that's going to be equal to e to the 1 plus 2i times t. Uh, integral. And how do you integrate that? Oops, I'm becoming a physicist here, ignoring my dt's. Uh, so the integral is going to be 1 over 1 plus 2i e to the 1 plus 2i times t. And I'm done. Well, not really. I'm done with my anti-differentiation. All I have to do now is some algebra. So let's see about doing this algebra. Uh, the algebra would be 1 minus 2i over, and then this would be a 1 squared plus 2 squared, which would be 5. And then this, I'm going to go ahead and factor out that exponential e to the t, because that's not going to play a role in my computation. Then I have e to the 2i t, and so that's going to be cosine of 2t plus i sine of 2t. Good. And now I just multiply this out. So e to the t. Now really I only need to compute the imaginary part. So where am I going to get the imaginary part of this? Uh, either from minus two-fifths i times cosine. So that would be, I'm going to go ahead and put an i out in front here. Oop. Let me not put that in red. Ah, ah. <laughs> okay, uh, this will be i. So this would be the imaginary part. I'll have minus two-fifths cosine of 2t. And then for the uh, i sine, that would come in with a plus one-fifth sine. Right? Now this is just the imaginary part of this expression. And so um, I could have the real part out here too, but that would just be for the cosine. And so I'm done now at this point. Um, what I'm saying here is that the integral of e to the t sine of 2t dt is equal to uh, e to the t times minus 2 fifths cosine of 2t plus 1 fifth sine of 2t plus e. That's it. Wow. So we've been hiding this from you all these years. The simple way of doing these integrals is by going into the complex plane. <laughs> okay, so this was this is kind of a fun application of complexification, right? Uh, but what does this have to do with the inter, uh, with the uh, differential equations? <clears throat> well, uh, remember that it's easier to use ex the exponential function in uh, you know if we have something of the form a y double prime plus by prime plus cy equals uh, e to the uh, at, right? Then we know that our particular solution is going to be a e to the at, or I may have to multiply this by t if I need to. Multiply by t if necessary. That's a lot easier than having a sine and cosine. And so what's going to happen is we're going to... Um, uh, we're going to complexify the problem and then solve it in the complex plane. So I'm going to pause for a second and write down a differential equation to solve. So here we go. y double prime plus 2y prime plus y equals cosine of 3t. We want to solve that by using complexification. Okay, so uh, the idea is, is we'll take 
A larger problem instead, y double prime plus 2y prime plus y equals cosine of 3t plus i sine of 3t. And so that changes this into e to the 3it, right? And this is, we've now complexified the problem. And so now I know that um, y sub h, my r's here are negative 1, negative 1, so I don't have to worry about um, this being part of the homogeneous uh, solution. So therefore, my particular solution, I'm going to guess, is a e to the 3it. And so when, now when I differentiate, oops, it's just like normal, treat the i as a constant, 3i a e to the 3it, yp double prime equals 3i squared, which would be nine, minus 9 a e to the 3it. Good. I'm going to plug these into my differential equation and see what I get. So that's going to be minus 9 a e to the 3i, 3it plus 2 times 3i a e to the 3it plus a e to the 3it equals e to the 3it. Alright, so you see we've got 3its everywhere. And so I can factor that out a e to the 3it times minus 9 plus 6i uh, plus 1 equals e to the 3it. Good. And now when I'm solving, 3its go away. And I'm just left with, oops, <laughs> what am I left with? I'm left with a is equal to 1 over minus 8 plus 6i. Good. So what we're saying now is that the solution is going to be the y sub p is going to be the real part of a e to the 3it, or in this case, right, it's going to be 1 over minus 8 plus 6i times e to the 3it. Okay. Um, and so we would still need to compute this, uh, but I'm running out of time, so I'm going to stop there and we'll finish off this problem in the next uh, video.